Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca and today we're going to be talking about the two different types of insulin orders. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. In general, we have basal bolus insulin orders and sliding scale insulin orders. But first, we'll cover a quick review of insulin and diabetes. Insulin is a hormone, normally secreted by the pancreas, that allows the body to use glucose or sugar for energy. Insulin is secreted into the blood and it basically tells your body's cells to open up and allow the glucose to enter the cells so that the cells can use the glucose for energy. So you can think of insulin as a hormone that lowers blood glucose levels because it helps to use up the glucose. People with diabetes either cannot produce insulin at all or can produce very little insulin on their own. Without insulin, the glucose that is consumed when eating gets trapped in the blood and can't be used and elevated blood glucose has many negative effects on the body, both short-term and long-term. So to help manage this high blood glucose in diabetic clients, we most often administer insulin subcutaneously at various times throughout the day. It can also be administered intravenously in emergencies. Normal blood glucose levels are approximately four to seven millimoles per liter, or 72 to 126 milligrams per deciliter. And depending on where you live, that will help determine which units are used. Millimoles per liter is the UK standard, and milligrams per deciliter is the US standard. The first order type that we have are basal bolus insulin orders, which are often referred to amongst nurses as regular or straight insulin orders. Basal bolus orders are actually split into two different insulin orders. First, we have our basal order, which may look something like this. Administer 10 units of insulin glargine a long-acting insulin, subcutaneously at 2100 or at bedtime. Insulin glargine will start working in about one and a half to four hours after administration and will keep the client's blood glucose levels stable throughout the entire night and into the next day. So the role of basal insulin is to keep blood glucose levels stable during periods of fasting, such as when the client is sleeping. Our body slowly releases glucose while we are asleep and without the correct amount of insulin, diabetic clients may enter hyperglycemia or elevated blood glucose levels. So again, to keep blood glucose levels stable throughout the night, we give a basal insulin, which is usually an intermediate acting or long acting insulin. The second part of the basal bolus insulin order is the bolus order. An example of a bolus insulin order would be administer five units of insulin Lispro, a rapid acting insulin, subcutaneously 15 minutes before each meal. Insulin Lispro will start working in about 15 minutes and will keep the client's blood glucose levels stable for each meal. So bolus doses of insulin are administered at meal times to keep blood glucose levels stable following glucose consumption. Normally, our body will secrete its own bolus of insulin after each meal so that we can start to use that consumed glucose as energy. But again, diabetic clients may not have the ability to produce their own bolus of insulin. So to mimic this, we administer a rapid acting or a short acting insulin just before or just after each meal, depending on the type of insulin. All in all, basal bolus orders are not too dependent on the client's blood glucose levels, as long as the levels are not outside of the client's baseline. The second order type that we have are known as sliding scale insulin orders. Sliding scale insulin orders look something like one of these. Again, depending on where you live, the units will be different. So for a sliding scale, usually before each meal and before bedtime, blood glucose levels would be checked and compared against a chart like this. And the chart tells us how much insulin to administer. On the left side of the charts, you can see the different ranges of the client's potential blood glucose levels. And on the right side of the charts, you can see how much insulin should be administered at each range. For example, Let's say your order reads, administer insulin Lispro subcutaneously 15 minutes before meals using the sliding scale provided. It is now 0800 and the client is to have breakfast soon and you check their blood glucose to be 7.8 millimoles per liter. 7.8 is within the range of 7.1 to 12. So we're told to administer two units of insulin Lispro based off of this sliding scale. If for another example, the client's blood glucose was 3.1 millimoles per liter instead, we would hold the insulin and notify the physician. The sliding scales will change from client to client, and you may even have multiple sliding scales for one client for different times of the day or for different insulins. 
but the goal of the sliding scale is always to monitor and maintain blood glucose levels by adjusting the amount of insulin being administered. So to review, a basal bolus insulin order is insulin that is to be administered at nighttime, basal, and at each meal, bolus. Basal bolus insulin orders are not very dependent on the client's blood glucose level, again as long as they are within baseline for that client. However, sliding scale insulin orders are very dependent on the client's blood glucose level and are usually ordered at each meal and sometimes at night. There is conflicting information on which form of insulin orders is considered best. Some clients may actually have both basal bolus orders and sliding scale orders, especially if their blood glucose levels fluctuate easily. I've placed a link in the video description of a study that compares the two different order types. And that's about it for the differences between basal bolus and sliding scale insulin orders. To download a list of common insulins with their peaks, onsets, and durations, I placed a link in the video description for that. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or visit rpnt.ca for more help.